Well, if you're after a lightweight Linux distro with a wide variety of applications pre-installed, and it gives you the option to choose from a few different desktops, there's not a whole load of choice. However, I do have one here today which I'll be reviewing called LXLE. It's release 12.04.3 Paradigm. It's based on Lubuntu 12.04 and it's on the 0.3 release update of Ubuntu. Yes, there's quite a few version numbers I've just mentioned there. Now it comes with a few different desktops, so you can choose from a classic Windows XP style, or you can have a Mac OS X style with the application launcher along the top, another launcher on the left hand side, and the application taskbar along the bottom of the screen. Or you could have the GNOME Classic style, or the Ubuntu Unity style with the application launcher on the left hand side, and another launcher across the top of the screen. And there's even a netbook style, where you can choose from a few different groups of applications. So that's kind of easier to use on the smaller screens. There is one thing I would like to point out with this distro. They say it's based on Ubuntu 12.04, which is fine. Yes, you've got long-term support, and there's still just under four years remaining on that. However, Lubuntu, which it's based on, was never a long-term support release. Now, if they've not done any more updates on the desktop, it potentially runs out of support in two months' time. But I've seen they've got, have got a community-maintained repository, as well as adding a load more repositories to the distro. And also remembering that the underlying system is based on long-term support. So potentially it may not be an issue, but I can't guarantee that 100%. If there is some critical flaw on the desktop, then it will go unpatched. Now to choose between the desktops, what you have to do is log out, and then you log back into a different one on the list. Now you notice it seems to have a different wallpaper on every desktop. Now it has a wallpaper switcher actively running, and it has quite a lot of different wallpapers in the list. I've not actually gone and looked how many it was. I think they talked about 50 of them. Haha, <laughs> what a guess, it is 50. So that's quite a nice touch to it. Uh, the GNOME desktop, like most of the other desktops, does have this launcher on the left-hand side. Opening applications from it seems to be very quick and responsive. So I can just go through the list and just click, 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 yep. And you can see I've opened up stacks of applications straight away. So responsiveness is very good. You do get the codex pre-installed on LXLE. So if I just go across to YouTube, we can see we have Flash Player pre-installed. Uh, let's just go onto my channel. Here are my system with all the applications I have pre-installed. So there you are, you can see Flash Player does work straight out of the box. I do like this option of having the application finder. It's very useful. Um, just, just close everything and open that on its own. So I opened up quite a lot there, didn't I? Uh, yeah, so and you do get this application launcher by pressing Alt and Z. It's slightly different than the one I looked at a moment ago, but if I start typing in something, it goes to previous used application there, so you can have Firefox, or as I just opened then was Firewall. Uh, pressing up and down choose switches between them. So once you've found the one you're after, you press Enter, and you get to it that way. Now I'm going to switch to a different desktop again to carry on more of the review. Just gives you a bit more experience of what the distro is actually like. So the Unity launcher. So that has the application launcher there at the top left. So when you open up applications on here, they end up as little square icons in the launcher. So exactly the same behavior as Unity has. Again, task manager. All oh, memory usage has gone up slightly. And Firefox there. Conky script up there in the top right is, seems to be running nicely. It gives you a few different uh, pieces of information there. So we've got CPU usage, memory usage, hard drive usage, and upload and download speed. Above it on the top right, we have volume control and network configuration. And that's the Conky on off button. Weather forecast, time and date, calendar, and shutdown. Anyway, let's take a look at what we get pre-installed, because it is quite a lot, and I'm not going to read it all out, because that would be far too much there, wouldn't it? Just a quick look at the file manager first. When you try going to a server on here, 
go network drives. It does not pick up Samba servers. If we want to get one, so that's Samba, SMB, or Windows shares. SMB, colon forward slash, one nine two one six. That would take me to a Samba server that I have running downstairs on my NAS. Responsiveness does seem pretty good though when you're using the Samba server there over the network. It's just finding it initially doesn't seem to work all that well. Pity. And that issue's been ongoing for some time though in LXDE. That's not a brand new thing applicable only to this distro. Been ongoing for a year and a half now, I think, at least. One other notable application there under accessories is the ClamTK virus checker. Not essential though to use in Linux. Under games, there's quite a wide variety of games under there. Uh, nothing complex 3D though, these are all mostly two dimensional games. Steam Launcher is available through the Software Center, they have added a repository for it. Under graphics, so we've got GIMP for there for the image editor. Internet, so we've got Firefox web browser, Linphone web phone. Pigeon Internet Messenger and Office. We have the full suite of LibreOffice, and that's version 4.1.0. Under Sound and Video, we've got this Guadake Music Player and Totem for the Movie Player. System Tools, there's quite a variety of tools on there. Nothing too notable though. But we do have this one here, which I hadn't seen before the Lubuntu Control Center, reminiscent of the Windows Control Panel and the GNOME Control Center. So you can uh, adjust quite a few uh, different settings from here. Well, it's just a quick launch for some different settings. And here is what I thought of LX LE at 12.04.3. So easy to use, yeah, reasonably easy enough to use, easy to install. The styling I do think is very good across the different selection of desktops that you can get. However, uh, could be a bit fancier. Um, that's difficult to and harsh, perhaps, to compare it against like uh, KDE or Ubuntu itself with the Unity launcher. Hmm, might be a bit harsh there. The boot up speed is a very quick at seven seconds. Interesting, that's about one second quicker than the elementary OS went that I looked at last week. Responsiveness is damn near instant. It is very quick. Number of bugs. There is just one there, the PC Man FM. It doesn't recognize the Samba servers particularly well. So if you had Windows shares or even Samba shares from a Linux machine, it's not going to recognize them. But you can type in the address in the PC Man FM file manager. Selection of pre installed applications. Oh, there are far too many on that distro, and I think there are far too many for my liking. So I've only given it 3 out of 5 for that. Number of applications available, there are a lot of repositories added, so I've given it five stars for that. So the good points, I think it is a clever styling of the lightweight LXDE desktop, giving you a few different choices of desktops to choose from. The bad points, uh, the pre-installed kernel is very old, which may cause an issue for newer hardware, such as the NVIDIA 600 series of graphics cards, and I think the 500 series as well, can't remember now, it's been a while since I've used it. Well, they do have the Raring Ringtail kernel available, so that's from the Ubuntu 13.04. Potentially gives you a newer kernel. However, that kernel was pretty awful, and was the reason that uh, there were some stability issues with Ubuntu 13.04. And also, Ubuntu 12.04 was in a very long-term support release. But I don't know how much of an issue that actually is. So overall, I've given it 85%. Thanks for watching. See you later.